that there are some Americans who have very sincere feelings that we have to bring in immigrants in order to show our concern for the third world. Is immigration an effective tool? In this illustration, I use this gumball as representing about one million people. Now, one million people is about what we take in a year in, in immigrants. This is not a small number because remember, this one gumball worth of, of, of immigration is driving every bit of this red. And each year, in our magnanimity, we try to rescue about this number from third world poverty. But how many people in the world are equally deserving of this kind of humanitarian concern on our part? Well, you've got to have some kind of benchmark, and I use Mexico. 25% of the immigrants in the 1980s came from Mexico. Depending on the value of the peso at the time, the average Mexican makes about one-tenth the amount of money that the average American makes. That's poor. I would say that's deserving of our compassion. But how many people in the world are more impoverished than the average Mexican? And the answer is 4,600 million people. 4.6 billion people in the world are more impoverished than the average Mexican. If immigration is a policy to help the people of the third world, I want you to watch very closely. Don't miss this. Because I want you to watch and see how much the third world changes each year when we take the million people out of it. You see, there can never be any hope for the people in the third world except here where they live. Most of these people, 99 point whatever percent of these people can never leave. They're stuck where they are. They have to bloom where they're planted. If we care about these people, we have to figure out ways to help them here. Because we can do this kind of thing forever, but we won't make any difference in the world. There are many ways that Americans can help third world nations, but immigration is not one of them. And let's look at another issue here. It's that, that is the issue of the safety valve. Since the 1950s, people have been talking about how the United States has to take the overpopulation of Latin American countries, lest those countries blow up. Can that work? Well, no, it can't. And let me show you why. The fact is, is that last year, we took about a million people. But last year, the third world added births over deaths, another 80 million people into the impoverished persons of the world. And this year, we'll take a million people. And this year, the third world will add more than 80 million more people. And next year, if the U.S. government insists on bringing this exorbitant, non-traditional level of immigration and brings another one million people, these people will still add another more than 80 million people into the impoverished numbers of the world. There's no way that we can ever get ahead of this. We cannot be a safety valve. We could take millions a year totally destroy the social fabric of this country, totally destroy the environmental resources, ruin any possibility of the lower skilled people in this country having any kind of a decent standard of living, we still would not get ahead of this. If we want to help the third world, immigration is meaningless. The most important thing we can do is answer the requests of third world nations that have been begging us for years to help them with family planning assistance. We have been enriched by so many immigrants who have brought tremendous skills into this country, and we're thankful for those. The question is, though, should we continue to drain off large numbers of skilled professional people from the other countries? Because you see, 25% of the people who come in this country are the people who could be the great agronomists, engineers, teachers, public health people, public administrators. Uh, who perhaps could do something here. If I were a person in some of those countries and had a chance to move here instead of staying here, I have no idea what I would do. This is not a moral judgment on the people who come here. It's a moral judgment on us and asking the question, do we continue to drain the most professional, brightest people from the rest of the world? Do we continue to drain the change agents?